hear the name Will Smith, hip hop is not the first thing that comes to your mind. But Will Smith is definitely hip hop. Born Willard Smith Jr. in my mother's hometown of Philadelphia, Will Smith first jumped on the scene as a rapper under the moniker The Fresh Prince. Will is so hip hop that he started when the DJ name came first, DJ Jazzy Jeff and The Fresh Prince. Their first album, Rock the House, was released in 1987 and it saw moderate success. Then they dropped He's the DJ, I'm the Rapper exactly a year later. This album went three times platinum and produced hits like Parents Just Don't Understand and There's a Nightmare on My Street. I just listened to that track and that track is a hip hop classic, y'all. Parents Just Don't Understand actually earned them the first Grammy ever for best rap performance. They released their next album in 1989 entitled And In This Corner. Then they dropped their fourth album, Home Base, in 1991. This album spawned the certified cookout ride out classic, Summertime. So Will had already dropped three albums and won a Grammy before he dropped Summertime. Okay. By this time, Will Smith, then known as the Fresh Prince, was popping. In September of 1990, Will Smith debuted in arguably his most notable role on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He and DJ Jazzy Jeff, who also produced the theme song and guest starred as The Fresh Prince's best friend, released their last album in 1993 entitled Cold Red. At this point in his career, it seems Will began his transition to being known as Will Smith. He led one of the best shows of our generation until it ended in 1996, but made his film debut in the 1992 film where the day takes you. Will Smith's first major role came in the movie Six Degrees of Separation, where he plays a con artist pretending to be Sidney Poitier's son. Will then began his assault on Hollywood, beginning with the movie Bad Boys alongside the legend Martin Lawrence. For perspective of the quick run of good movies he went on, between 1995 and 2001, he dropped one of these every year. Bad Boys, Independence Day, Men in Black, Enemy of the State, Wild Wild West, The Legend of Bagger Vance, and Ali. In 2002 and 2003, he starred in the sequels to Men in Black and Bad Boys, then stayed on the run of more awesome movies like The Pursuit of Happiness, Shark Tale, I Am Legend, Hancock, Seven Pounds. One thing that makes Will Smith special as an artist is his ability to be memorable. His movies stand out in your mind just like his hit songs. And back to his contributions to hip hop, cause he did not stop being a rapper when he became a movie star. In 1997, he released his debut solo album, Big Willie Style. This album went nine times platinum. Yes, nine times platinum. The album contained hit songs like Men in Black, Just Cruising, Getting Jiggy With It, Just the Two of Us, and Miami. He came back in 1999 with Millennium, which went two times platinum. Will Smith is the ultimate dual threat. And though he doesn't have a rap career now, I know he can still get in the booth and burn it down if he wanted to. Of course, he's still doing his thing on the big screen. I really enjoyed his performance in the 2015 release, Concussion. He has also led numerous films since then, most notably Aladdin, Spies in Disguise, and Bad Boys for Life. Some of Will Smith's accolades include, of course, the two Grammys, multiple American Music Awards, MTV Awards, and NAACP Image Awards. He is the only actor to have 11 consecutive films gross over 150 million internationally. As of 2014, 17 of the 21 films he has led have accumulated worldwide gross earnings of more than $100 million, with five taking over $500 million. As of 2020, his films have grossed just under $9 billion at the global box office. So yes, he is one of the greatest actors of all time, but don't forget he can rhyme. Big shouts out to Will Smith, aka the Fresh Prince, you did. So now we're going to get into the legendary Cash Money Records. Founded by brothers Ronald Slim and Brian Baby Williams in the early 90s, Baby stated his reasons for starting the label. He was hoping to get them out of the projects and into a more positive way of life, and he wanted to help other people get out of poverty as well. In 1996, Cash Money began signing its slate of high-level artists. The artists included BG, Turk, Juvie, and Lil Wayne. These four artists formed the supergroup, The Hot Boys. There was originally a fifth member of the group named Bulletproof, but he left the group before they saw success and was killed in 2002. 
1998, Cash Money Records signed an unprecedented deal with Universal, which became known as the 80-20 distribution deal. Details of the deal included $30 million for press and distribution with a $3 million advance. Cash Money was entitled to 85% of his royalties and 50% of his publishing revenues and ownership of all of his masters. After the deal, Cash Money began to see huge national success. The first major release also came in 1998. Juvenile's 400 Degrees went four times platinum and produced the timeless classic, Bat That Thing Up. The album's release in 1999 also went platinum and produced memorable hits. BG's Chopper City in the Ghetto spawned the track Bling Bling, and Hot Boy's Guerrilla Warfare gave us tracks like I Need a Hot Girl. All of Cash Money's early albums and hits were produced by one man and one man only, the legendary Manny Fresh. Cash Money's success continued into the 2000s. Between 2001 and 2003, the label sold over 7 million records. This is with an 80-20 split. Label owner Baby Birdman Williams and Manny Fresh formed the group Big Timers. This group produced the label's first Grammy-nominated hit, Still Fly, in 2002. Around this same time, the label began undergoing unwanted changes when Juvie and BG left due to financial mismanagement. Juvenile returned shortly after his departure and gave the company its first number one hit with the track entitled Slow Motion. This track featured New Orleans legend Soldier Slim, who was murdered four months before the song was released. At this point, Cash Money basically went underground and Mixtape Wayne emerged. In addition to the albums he released, Wayne dropped 18 mixtapes between 2002 and 2009. The series titles were the SQ series, the Drought series, and the Dedication series. By 2005, Lil Wayne was arguably the most popular artist in the world, and Cash Money rolled his success through the rest of the decade. In 2009, Cash Money signed Nicki Minaj and Drake to the newly formed Young Money Entertainment. Both these artists saw unprecedented success, further solidifying Cash Money's prominence in the music industry. For general perspective of Cash Money's dominance in regards to album sales over the years, as of March 2019, the label has accumulated over 130 album sales and gross revenue of $1.8 billion since 1998. Nicki Minaj is the only superstar currently signed to the label. In order to expand and remain relevant, Baby and Slim will have to rely on their ability to develop up-and-coming artists and help them navigate the changing music landscape. They're also going to have to modify some of their business practices. It's been noted that they won't pay you unless you sue them first, so that's definitely going to have to change if they expect to be successful moving forward. Cash Money legitimately dominated the hip-hop scene for a solid 20 years. Now we have to wait and see what they do with the next 20. Big shouts out to Baby and Slim and the whole Cash Money legacy, you did. Word up. Now let's get into some history, uh, in particular hip-hop legacy. So we're going to be discussing the legacy of the legendary Ice Cube. Yes, West Coaster. Yay, yay! You know how Ice Cube do? Well, on the real though. Um, at age 16, Cube sold his first song to the legendary Eazy-E. Uh, at age 18, Cube actually got a diploma from an architectural drafting school. So he's a smart dude, man. Architecture is not easy, you know what I mean? But um, so he did that 18. He was actually in NWA, major success. Uh, NWA is, you know, arguably one of the best groups ever. Left the group in 1990, released a legendary diss song aimed at N.W.A. entitled No Vaseline. And if you never heard No Vaseline, man, oof, Cuz went super duper hard on him, man. Go listen to No Vaseline. It's one of the hardest diss tracks ever. Um, so 1990, he released his first album, America KKK's Most Wanted. Then he dropped Death Certificate. After that, he dropped The Predator. The Predator spawned Today Was a Good Day. Classic. 2070, we're going to be banging today was a good day. Like, we dropped that yesterday. So, you know, that's timeless. Um, yeah, so today was a good day. That was 1992. That's around the same time he made his film debut in Boys in the Hood. So, we talked about his musical contribution. But his filmography is arguably more impressive than his musical contribution. Now, I mean, that's saying a lot. I mean, with all due respect, that's saying a lot. 
So his first joint was Boys in the Hood. That was with John Singleton in 1992. Uh, he was 22 when he made his film debut. Move forward, did Higher Learning. Higher Learning was with John Singleton. Then he wrote his own joint, Friday. You know, that was classic, <sighs> hands down, probably one of the best comedies ever. Um, Anaconda, he was a part of that. Um, Players Club, he wrote and directed Players Club. Um, all the Fridays, all the barbershops, all about the Benjamins. Um, Are We There Yet? Uh, the Kids movie. You got to love Cube with the kids, man. I mean, come on, with the kids. Cube was the man. Both Ride Alongs, a, a bunch of other ones, man. I mean, Cube is just a legend. You know what I mean? Lottery ticket, janky promoters, stuff. You know? But um, yeah, so we got the movies, got the music. Then the brothers, he, he founded the big three, man. He founded the big three, like, so to do music. Movies and the NBA. Like, come on, man. Like, who is you? Like, a legend. That's who, that's who he is, man. So, a monster for good. That, that's what Cube is. Cube is a monster of good. Um, on top of all this, his, his personal and career contributions, man. This brother been married to the same woman for 30 years. Almost 30 years. And they got four kids, man. No, no, you don't hear no scandals around this brother. This, this, he's done it the right way for 30 years, man. So, this big shouts out to the legend himself, Ice Cube. Yay, yay, you know? Big shouts out, legend. Power. Yeah, yeah. So, now let's get into some hip hop legacy with our guy, DMS. Um, DMS, he, he's so many things you can say about DMS. Uh, constant beacon of light for those in need, particularly those in dark places. Um, DMS has been a proponent of mental health awareness since he dropped in 1998, but before he got big, before the world knew him, S was already making noise in the industry. Um, but let's give a little background about who DMS is. DMS spent his teenage years in and out of youth detention centers. Um, after a prison stint in 1988, he decided to pursue a professional career in hip hop. After being recognized by The Source magazine in 1991, he released his debut single in 1992, but was dropped from the label after the lack of success of his debut single. Through the 90s, DMS was always inching toward what he would become, uh, appearing on Mike Geronimo's project in 1995 alongside Ja Rule and Jay-Z, um, appearing on L. Cool J's 4321 in 97, also working on numerous hits for Bad Boy, uh, Mace's 24 Hours to Live, The Lots' is Money, Power, Respect, in 1998, DMS took flight, becoming the first solo artist to drop two platinum albums in the same year. In February, he dropped His Dark and Hell is High. In December, he dropped Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood. X came right back in 1999 with And Then There Was X. That was his third album and his best-selling album of all time. For general perspective of DMS's dominance in the post-Biggie Tupac era, It's Dark and Hell is High sold 5 million copies. Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood sold 4 million copies, and then there was Ed sold over 6 million copies. His fourth album, The Great Depression, was not as strong as the first three albums, but it still went number one. In 2003, he returned with his fifth straight number one album, Grand Champ. In dogfighting, a five-time champion is considered a grand champ. And if you don't know DMS's history, he has a strong relationship with dogs, all the way back to his teenage years when he was homeless and he befriended stray dogs. They were basically his closest companions. Shouts out to Boomer. As of 2014, DMS has sold over 17.1 million records worldwide. In 1998, DMS also made his film debut starring alongside Nas in the movie Belly. Belly was directed by legendary music video director Hype Williams and is strongly considered a street classic. I still need Belly Part 2 when DMS gets back from Africa. In 2000, he did Romeo Must Die with Aaliyah and Jet Li. In 2001, he starred in Exit Wounds alongside Steven Seagal. In 2003, he starred in Cradle to the Grave alongside Jet Li. And his last major role was starring in Never Die Alone as a reforming criminal, King David. This film was directed by Ernest Dickerson, who also directed the legendary Juice. I definitely recommend you go find Never Die Alone if you've never seen that. Through years of turmoil, whether it be legal issues or drug addiction, X's legacy is still intact. We love DMX and are so thankful for his presence in hip hop and beyond. In 2016, DMX fathered his 15th child. He engaged the child's mother in 2019 and is expected to be married soon. Shouts out to the legend DMX. So 
next we're going to get into one of our unsung legends and that is the legendary Method Man. Now you might know Method Man as a part of the Wu-Tang Clan crew, you might know him uh, from his acting skills that you see him today, but Method Man is a masterful MC all the way back from the early 90s. He was a huge part of some of the greatest albums of course coming from Wu-Tang. In 1993 Wu-Tang dropped their debut into the 36 Chambers, then followed that up in 1997 with Wu-Tang Forever. Uh, these are amongst some of the greatest albums ever released in hip-hop and of course they went multi-times platinum. Method Man's efforts outside of the group were successful as well. Uh, in 1994 Method Man dropped his debut album to Cal. He was actually the first member of Wu-Tang to release a solo album after they debuted in 93. So he dropped that, of course it went platinum, also spawned the classic, one of the most legendary hip-hop duets ever in You All I Need, Future and Mary J. Blige. I know you know that one. <laughs> In 1998, his follow-up album to Cal 2000, Judgment Day, also went platinum. Method Man's first collab with Red Man entitled Blackout, Platinum. He also saw major success on the Blackout 2 project and the How High soundtrack with Red Man. Throughout Method Man's career, he's been one of the best featured artists in hip-hop, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the greatest. Method Man was the only rapper featured on Biggie's Ready to Die, and he along with Red Man were the only New York rappers featured on Tupac's All Eyes on Me. Meth continues to bless the mic to this day. Whenever he gets on, you know it's going to be high level material. So we appreciate that, Meth. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Like a few other legends in hip hop, Method Man's talents have expanded to the screen. He made his theatrical debut in the movie Copland in 1997. His most notable roles in movies would probably be Bellies in 1998. He played the role of Shah Meek. He was the enforcer for one of the, I guess, antagonists in the film. Met his demise at the hands of Terrell Hicks. I don't know if you remember it, but it was quite crazy how she handled him, but it was really good. In 2001, Method Man starred in How High alongside Red Man as the character Silas. Definitely a movie you have to get into if you haven't seen it. Something I go back to all the time. But yeah, that was a great movie. Another great role for Method Man. Now those are some of his more notable roles, but Method Man has over 50 movie credits. While you've seen him in the movies, TV is where Method Man bakes the bread though. He's appeared on four episodes of the show Oz, three episodes of The Wire, 13 episodes of Method and Red. He's been on CSI, he's been on Law and Order, and numerous other roles. His recent roles include a major character on the HBO series The Deuce and on Tracy Morgan's Last OG. Method Man is a legend and will go down in hip hop history. We're so thankful for your contributions and can't wait to see what's next. You dig? Thank you for watching, you dig? Please like, comment, and share this good information with your people. Also, follow us on IG and Twitter at Rhymes Designs, and follow us on Facebook, Rhymes and Designs. You can find all the merchandise at rd.com. You dig?